Today, I want to do something a little bit more interesting, and I want to give guys advice on how they can appear more confident during their day game cold approaches, or maybe whenever during the day your, uh, your cold approaches are. And these are observations that I have certainly made um, over the years. Now, bear in mind, I have worked, yes, in the dating industry for the last 15 years, but I have been filming in it for the last 10. And during that period of time, with all the time that I've spent working with all these dating coaches and relationship coaches of sorts, I have miraculously filmed probably like 15 20,000 plus approaches during that time. And this is content that has been both publicly shared on YouTube as well as content that has been filmed privately for people's eyes only and for them to be able to learn uh, in their own time and also just see how they are in their own interactions. And from everything that I've certainly seen and experienced over the years, I'd say these top three things are probably the main things that if any guy can certainly work on, then it's going to just emphasize your confidence even more during every uh, approach that you do. So many guys, um, I, I would say, probably develop a lot of uh, really bad habits and mannerisms as they've grown up, especially if they haven't had the right kind of social environments to develop their skills in. So if you've got a guy who's maybe not had really any close friends or he hasn't really had a great support system, then it's going to be very difficult for him to uh, probably talk to strangers and he's going to suffer from uh, either social anxiety or approach anxiety, which as you'll certainly see uh, in the, in the, the card, I think it's that corner uh, in the, uh, in the card um, that I have actually done another video on it that I don't believe approach anxiety exists. I think it is just certainly a, uh, a cover up for uh, uh, the social anxiety and uh, I, I give pretty good explanations as to why in that. So do check that video out. But point being is in all of the years of certainly watching and filming the approaches, I have seen patterns and behaviors that have come up. And where a lot of guys tend to develop these bad habits or mannerisms, they usually tend to be the things that emphasize this lack of confidence or when they uh, sit into these bad habits, it's what could be one of the, some of the main things that give them their social anxiety. And I think probably uh, an, an easier explanation of this would be kind of like with method acting, that if you've got bad behaviours and you just carry on with those bad behaviours, then you are going to keep yourself in a certain personality or a certain set of behaviors or traits. Whereas if you are pushing your confidence, if you tweak these bad behaviors, um, which I will go through, I promise I will go through. But if you end up tweaking these bad behaviors and you are aware of what you are doing wrong, then if you start taking control over that, then you can change your internal belief system. You can change how your confidence appears, not just to yourself, but also to other people. So let, let's just go through this. So number one, one of the, the big things that I don't think uh, men are doing properly uh, is holding eye contact with people. Now, when you've got someone who does suffer from a lot of social anxiety or maybe they've just not had enough uh, interactions with people, then it's very difficult to hold eye contact. Now, for me, back in the day, uh, we'll go back to 2009 here. Eye contact was probably the first thing that I had decided to work on because my eye contact was very difficult. I found it impossible to just stare at someone for a period of time. And if I did that, suddenly I'd be like, uh, yeah. And I, I'd find I'd just, you know, start fidgeting and, and doing anything else. So, um, eye contact really is probably the one thing that if men can learn to, to handle, then it can really emphasize confidence with anyone, not just even with women, especially women you're attracted to, but not just with them, but literally with 
anyone. It emphasizes confidence and dominance, as well as maybe even masculinity as well. So what can men do to develop or improve their eye contact? Well, I hate to say it, but you have to be holding eye contact with people, which uh, can sound kind of scary or daunting maybe for some, but you can start it quite small and incrementally. So for guys who are absolutely petrified, so we're talking about the really, really uh, struggling ones here. And there is nothing wrong if you are one of these people, I might add. Um, At some point, especially in one's personal development, you have to kind of admit you suck at something that you just aren't very good. So we'll start with the the, the ground foundation here. Standing in front of a mirror, holding eye contact with yourself in the mirror and just talking, which can sound strange. So maybe I'd probably recommend doing it when people aren't around and watching you. So if you're around like family, friends, uh, housemates, even uh, maybe even a pet as well, that might confuse them if they see you talking to yourself in the mirror. But um, just practicing just holding eye contact. Now you'll find it incredibly easy because you're not going to be intimidated by yourself. And that's the point. First of all, we just set in the concept of what it looks like and what it feels like to be holding eye contact with another person. So from that, then I would say if you can just at least just challenge that belief of going like, you know what, actually this isn't so bad to look at myself in the mirror and just holding eye contact. If you can manage that for maybe like a couple of minutes, then the next sort of step up would be to actually test that in public. So going out to certainly quite public areas is going to be the the best thing for you. Obviously, somewhere that has volume that you have the opportunity to lock eyes with someone um, as you're walking past them. And plus as well, I think just getting out of the house and experiencing, uh, again, what it's like to be in public can also be a great way to manage uh, one's um, uh, social anxiety as well if you are surrounding yourself with other people. Because I do know guys who certainly want to work on their dating, but they just hate being in social environments. Environment. So it is important to try and, I don't know, kill two birds with one stone here if you can. But when you're walking around, just try and look at people's eyes. Even if they're not looking at you, just try and get comfortable with looking at people's eyes. If people then look to make eye contact with you, it doesn't matter. You can break the eye contact. You can go the, do the whole like, oh, what's this building over here? Um, it, do, it doesn't really matter. But it's just that second step of just getting used to being in an environment and looking to just make that intention. Intention is the key here of holding eye contact with people. Now, the step after that would be to try and challenge yourself, maybe even gamify it in some form or another. And that means to like create some like reward system or something. And maybe, you know, if you're doing it, if you're going out with a a friend or another guy who's also socially anxious and also struggling with eye contact, then this is a great opportunity to test it with them as well. And uh, again, playing that, set some like challenge with each other and you can maybe whoever can hold eye contact the longest, buys the other person uh, uh the other person buys them a drink or something like that but what you then want to do is literally that you want to go out and you want to try and challenge yourself to hold eye contact with people for as long as possible as you are walking past them now realistically especially if you're in areas like london I'd probably say three, four seconds is going to be your max there. And that is really good. And the great thing with this is that if you are practicing holding eye contact for longer and longer, it might start off at one second, then it gets to two seconds, then three seconds, then four seconds. You're also doing something that's called uh, or creating something that's called an indicator of interest. So you are forcing a situation to play out where if a uh, lady who you're attracted to is holding eye contact with you, then you actually open up the opportunity of creating what's called a warm approach. So rather than being a cold approach where you just have no idea 
if that person is probably going to be interested in you or not. And by talking to them, you are going to be building attraction and hopefully turning that into a warmer approach. You could already, before you go into an interaction, turn it into a warmer approach where in a way she has invited you to come and talk to her. And that can usually be not just through holding eye contact for a long period of time, but if she gives you a bit of a smile. And maybe you can also encourage that by giving a smile whilst you're holding eye contact with people. So that could be the next step up here as well. And lastly, the really big challenge for the guys who are already going into approaches or they're already talking to women on the street or in wherever, then the last phase is that you have to train yourself to fractionate your eyes less. So what is fractionation? Well, that is where after holding intensity with someone eye contact wise, you look away. Now, guys with a lot of social anxiety, they tend to look away a lot more than holding the eye contact. So we want to try and invert this. You want to try and turn this uh, around. And you do that by literally trying to hold your focus on the other person. It will feel so strange and abnormal at first because you're not used to it but you have to do it long enough that it does become second nature and for you to train your body to understand not so much your brain but your body to understand that holding eye contact with someone really isn't a big deal and the faster and more frequently that you can do it so by that I mean like if you're constantly going into different approaches just challenge yourself to keep that focus there hold that intensity and in fact a byproduct of also holding eye contact with someone is that you will create sexual tension and I'll do another video I think probably on this because certainly for guys who have a lot of uh, anxiety not just social anxiety here but just anxiety they find it very difficult to sit in sexual tension but if you can manage it you will certainly give yourself brownie points with the girl and increase your attraction level with her. And certainly for guys who maybe are going into interactions um, and yes, they might be getting numbers, but finding that they're flaking, um, a portion could be because eye contact hasn't been held enough to create that sexual tension. And usually with a lot of women, they will say, look, if there's no spark there, then it, it kind of sizzles out. So you can actually create that spark through holding eye contact and creating sexual tension. So if you are struggling, certainly with eye contact, and personally, I think this is probably the biggest thing that most men do struggle with. But if you can work on challenging yourself with holding eye contact with people even more so, then I can assure you, you will see a huge bump up in results when you are talking to people. And also, even in just your normal everyday life, if you can be holding eye contact with friends and family, work colleagues, your boss, maybe even uh, even better, then, uh, then absolutely, I think you'll probably find as well that people will treat you a little bit differently. They will treat you uh, a little bit better. So that is point number one, eye contact. If you can work on your eye contact, absolutely, you will improve your confidence with your uh, with your day game approaches. Now, second one, this is fidgeting and people sort of like not keeping still when they are uh, in their interactions. So like most people who do tend to get really nervous, they tend to sort of fidget, they might end up playing with things, doing whatever, uh, or they'll, they'll like touch themselves and maybe not in so much of a dirty way, but you know, they, they just can't keep still. And when you're talking to, to people, especially strangers, the last thing you want to do is give the impression like you've got ants in your pants or that you're like busting for the toilet or something. You know, you want to be standing there very calmly and very relaxed because that also then... Uh, I, I hate to kind of use uh, like the words like energy and aura because I think it's probably a bit too woo-woo, but other people feel that as well. If you are being very relaxed and still and you've got this composure going on 
then people tend to feel a bit relaxed, a bit more relaxed around you. Um, they don't tend to sort of feel so, I think, intimidated by people who are moving around. People who are a bit more erratic, you just can't quite predict what they're going to do, how they're going to behave. And so that can actually have people on edge. But when people tend to be appearing a lot more zen and a lot more relaxed, especially for what I have seen uh, when like coaches have, have approached women, um, the women just kind of sink into that. So there's, there is uh, an element of being very um, masculine when people feel safe within your calmness, which is a very kind of bizarre statement, but it, it, it's it's really kind of a feeling that that you'll get uh, in that circumstance. Um, so you'll you'll have to obviously experience that. But but how can you experience that? Well, simply put, when guys are in their approaches and they are a bit nervous, they tend to sort of like shift on the spot. We in I think all of the interactions that I've certainly filmed. Um, yes, coaches, uh, not coaches. Yes, uh, the students of coaches do tend to try and copy the behaviours of their favorite coaches. So they maybe will stand in a certain way, in a certain posture, uh, et cetera, which is fine, but you can also see that there is an element of unnaturalness there. So it's really a case of thinking about, first of all, when you're talking to your friends or the people that you trust and that you're close to, how do you stand with them? How comfortable do you feel with them? Are you as fidgety with them or are your hands in your pockets? Are they behind your back? Are, are your arms crossed? Which, okay, you can't quite see uh, on camera here, but, you know, are you, you know, how relaxed are you with people that you trust? And in every, with every woman that you're speaking to, you want to try and bring that thought process into that approach. So if you are someone who tends to fold their arms when they're talking to their friends, do that with the women as well. Forget about the concept of like, oh, well, crossing arms is closed body language and then it looks like I'm being defensive and stuff. It's only defensive if the conversation that you're having with someone emphasizes that you are being defensive. If you're just someone who very comfortably talks with their arm crossed, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're someone who has their hands in their pockets, absolutely nothing wrong with that. As long as your hands aren't like fidgeting and it looks like you're playing with yourself, which I have very weirdly seen guys do, ish, um, then uh, then you're going to find that, again, keeping very still looks like you are keeping your composure and you are very comfortable with awkward or strange situations. Same as well, if maybe you are someone who emphasizes talking with the hands, I know I am, that is absolutely fine. But as long as the rest of your body is standing perfectly still and you're not like dancing on the spot, then, you know, that is, that is again where the mistakes tend to lie. So, Point being, at least with this, um, with this uh, particular uh, issue that that men do have, if you can learn to keep more still in your interactions, and the only way you're going to be able to do that is really just being aware of your movement and thinking about what does a relaxed posture or sensation feel like to me and how can I bring that into my interactions. But the more you can be aware of any bad habits the better and more control you will have over it. And it won't be just an overnight thing. You will have to kind of give it certainly a few approaches until you get used to it. But it's nothing that like working on that particular issue in a day won't sort. So it's a very, very easy fix. Same with eye contact as well. It's just changing those physical symptoms that you get when you are in a very anxious situation. And lastly, one of the other issues that I think men do have, that certainly if you can change it, uh, will absolutely emphasize confidence, and that is slower speaking and lowering your vocal tonality. So you'll probably see certainly with a lot of infields on the internet, really not maybe so much with dating coaches, but certainly with like their clients, um, a lot of them tend to speak maybe a little bit too fast, and also they tend to speak a little bit too high and they don't project their voice enough. So they tend to like 
they tend to whisper. Hang on, you move this. But anyway, they tend to whisper really, really quietly, and you just can't quite hear them. So by not speaking loudly, not getting used to projecting your voice, that can also emphasize this lack of confidence. Imagine every confident person that you know, they speak very boldly, they speak proudly and with conviction. And this is something that you, you have to look to try and work on as well. And the only way you can do that is by getting used to speaking loudly. You can do it in the comfort of your own home, uh, especially if there's no one around. Just get used to talking loudly. Imagine if someone's standing a few meters away, how would you speak loud enough for them to hear, but not stupidly loud that you're like shouting somewhere? Now, a great way you can test this especially if you are going out with other men on the street to practice your social skills, is to actually just practice that. I've got the hiccups now. Uh, to actually just practice that with each other. Stand a few feet apart from each other and try and talk to each other. Just try and have a conversation and give each other that kind of thumbs up, that green light to say, yep, yeah, I, I quite like that. You don't sound like you're shouting, but you sound really clear and I can hear you with no problem at all. And that is probably really just the only test that you need with that. But when you are going into your approaches, what I do want you to practice is trying to take more breaths, which in fact will actually help with the uh, the previous point as well of uh, being more relaxed in your body, but taking more breaths speaking more slowly, speaking more deeply, and also projecting your voice, which completely changes the tone of any conversation. And in fact, like I mentioned with creating sexual tension with eye contact, you can do that with your voice as well. And a great example actually is by watching probably some of Christian's videos. So Christian Casanova, uh, who I do a lot of filming with, as well as we've got a collaboration on some projects together as well, which I highly recommend checking out. If you look at how he projects his voice and even how he talks to the women, he stands very still, he holds a lot of eye contact, he has a very deep voice anyway, he speaks nice and slowly. I'd say he's a very good example of just the combination of those three things together uh, or these three points that I've made together um, and how you can benefit from that as well. And again, everything here is completely replicable. You can copy that. You can find your own way of doing things. But ultimately, learn how to develop your eye contact. Learn how to stand more still. And also learn how to project your voice. Speak slower and speak a little bit deeper. So try not to speak as if you're like, like talking up here. Instead, try and practice just talking as if you're kind of like talking down. Okay, so I hope this video was uh, really useful for you. And I promise with this particular video, at some point I will make an infill demonstration of this. Um, I'm at the moment in the process of trying to look for uh, a cameraman uh, who can film the infills that I wanna do. And certainly the street demonstrations of like meditations um, and social freedom exercises, as well as just just very simple things that any man can do to get hold of their social anxiety, which can certainly make doing their approaches a little less scary. So if you are, in fact, in fact, I'll turn this into a slight wanted poster here. If you are someone who actually is open to filming me on the streets of London, um, I would love to, to hear from you. The irony is that as I do the filming with all of the other coaches, the fact that now I'm trying to put myself on camera and I've got absolutely no one that I can trust or who's viable enough to, to film that content, uh, it is a real dilemma to, to find someone, especially with my level of uh, perfectionism uh, and uh, critique of how infields uh, should and have to be filmed. So if you are open to certainly filming me, then I would love your help. And it just means then that I can start creating content that is going to make massive impacts 
on guys and their approaches. Uh, and also, you know, I don't want to be just a talking head video all the time in all of my videos. I would love to be able to demonstrate um, what I am uh, giving advice wise to. I think that's going to be just even more beneficial to you and really just demonstrate just how good my coaching is and how much I really do genuinely want to help people as well. So if you can uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel as well, uh, get in contact with me if you would be open to the idea of filming me. There will be a little bit of a screening process to be honest. So don't worry if uh, I'm gonna, I will need to see some kind of proof at some point of uh, how you film, whether that be an actual filming thing with me just as a trial for like an hour maybe, or uh, if you've got some video proof. But get in contact if you can help me with some filming. Also, I would love to hear your thoughts on these three uh, these three points to help you with your confidence. And in fact, I'd actually love to hear how you've been doing working on these as well and the difference that working on your eye contact, your posture and your speaking has made with your interactions too. But don't worry, I promise an infield and demos and whatnot will come on this channel. But yeah, the, the drama is just trying to find someone who can, uh, can help film me with these. So if you know someone, get in contact. But other than that, Thank you very much for watching and look forward to more videos from me soon.